Welcome to Reading Horror in the Dark. Hey guys, today is now day five of Summerween. We are halfway through the readathon, so I thought this would be a good time to do kind of like a mid-week check-in with what I've read, the progress that I've made on my TBR. So I've read five books so far. I'm doing great. These are all of the five books that I read. If you missed my previous two Summerween vlogs, you can hear my thoughts on all of these books. And then here are the three books that I have left on my TBR. Although there are a couple other books that I wanna try to read before the readathon is over. So we need to decide what I'm gonna be reading today. I am going to be taking When the Reckoning Comes off of my TBR for Summerween because I did have the audiobook checked out from the library, but my checkout ended, so I don't have the audiobook anymore, and the wait is very long. So I don't think I will be getting to this. I have a couple other books kind of that were on the back burner that I do have audiobooks for. So it's fine. So then the two remaining books that were on my planned TBR are Ring Shout and The Trees Crept In, both of which I have the audiobooks for. I think today though, I'm going to start And The Trees Crept In. I wanna read this for the reading a book in the dark prompt. So I wanna get a good ways into it before nighttime so that when I'm reading it in the dark, it will potentially be at the scariest parts of the book. I know nothing about this book other than it's about two kids who are going to stay at this like creepy manor with their aunt and there's creepy things going on. It also has like weird font things going on in it. So we'll see what that's all about. So I'm gonna start this today and hopefully get a good chunk of it read before nighttime so that we can, we can have the optimal reading horror in the dark moment. Two little girls ran away from the dark and stormy city. They happened upon a manor one day and the lady inside took pity. In they flew and perched quite fine and ate all but one juicy berry. The little girl slept sang and smiled and the memories they vowed to bury all right so i'm a little bit into and the trees crept in now just a little bit and i'm really liking it so far i'm listening to it on audio and following along in the physical book which is how i would recommend to read it because there are like physical things to look at but also the audiobook narration 10 out of 10 the narrator like whispers some parts in like a creepy voice. There's some music, sound effects. There's really like a lot of acting in the performance. So it's great. I would recommend both if you can. Plot wise, not much has happened. These two girls have shown up at their Aunt Kath's creepy manor. There's obviously something sinister going on. Don't know what that is yet, but I mentioned that the author really use, utilizes font choice. And I'll give you an example of that. So right here we have a book entry and if you read the book entry it's just kind of like a normal diary entry but then if you go back and only read all the bolded words it's saying something else so i'll read you what this says it's not spoilery born part crazy all dirty i had a beautiful disposition fear held everyone we were all afraid words were gone fading into nothing and tears when dark and absence came i felt empty and afraid but now there's only the thing in the woods and a ghost. How cool is that? It's kind of reminding me, like the style that it's written in is reminding me of House of Leaves, which I haven't read, but based on what I've heard people say about that book and me like flipping through it every time I go to Barnes and Noble, it kind of is giving me those vibes where like the actual book is almost a puzzle. I'm really enjoying it so far. It has a fun reader experience. Y'all, it is still daytime i'm barely 70 pages into this book and i'm already freaked out there's this it i don't know how to describe it it has this like very eerie unsettling tone and especially with the audiobook it's freaky it's like there's certain parts where you're listening to the audiobook and you're reading the actual words right but then there's like a voice a whisper behind the words giving you like a hidden message. This is one of the trippiest audiobook experiences I've ever had. It's freaking me out, okay? It is freaking me out. And we're still like, the sun is up. 
Now I'm nervous to read this in the dark. I feel like I picked the best one because so far of all the books I've read, I'm getting scared the most. But tonight is gonna be an experience. I don't know if it's gonna be a good one, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be an experience. Hello. We need some Loki content. Sorry, I had to wake you. The people are asking for Loki content. You are the star of the show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> While I'm waiting for the sun to go down, I think I'm going to watch Sinister, which is a horror movie that I really love. Also has Ethan Hawke. That's why I want to watch it. I have this thing where if I watch a movie and there's an actor or actress in the movie that I associate with another movie, I then have to go watch that other movie or I can't stop thinking about it. So I have to watch Sinister. And then by the time it's over, the sun will definitely be down. It'll be nighttime and we can commence the reading in the dark. Sinister? I don't even know if it's streaming anywhere. I might have to buy it. Wait, there was two. Oh, the second one. Okay. Ooh. I can watch the second one. No, we'll save the second one for tomorrow. This movie actually scares me. So by the time it's over, I will be properly scared and ready to read more in the dark. It'll set the vibe perfectly. Wait, actually, I don't think I can show this on YouTube. Oh yeah, no, I definitely cannot show this. Boo. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Welcome to reading horror in the dark. This looks very spooky. Um, as you guys can see, it's completely dark around me. I'm in the dark. So I'm going to be continuing reading my book. I'm already spooked because Sinister was scary. No matter how many times I've seen that movie, it always freaks me out. So I'm already borderline scared. All right, let's start my creepy audiobook. Because one, I'm sitting in the dark, but two, the flashlight is blinding me, so I, I like I cannot see anything beyond this far away from me. There could be someone standing right in front of me and I would not even know right now. <laughs> okay, I've been reading for like an hour. Honestly, I'm getting sleepy, but I'm really enjoying this book so far. The vibes are definitely creepy, but it's also kind of trippy. Like, I don't really know what's real and what's not. I feel like there's hidden messages in the words. So I'm kind of like, like I'm reading everything, but then I'm also like double reading it. Cause I'm like, what's the hidden message? What do I need to be like? You gotta read between the lines. But I feel like I need to be reading this with a clearer mind. And I'm one, a little freaked out cause I'm sitting in the dark and two, I'm tired. So we're gonna pick this back up in the morning. I'm gonna go to bed, but we have successfully completed this challenge of reading in the dark. It's done. I don't need to do it again. Now I'm probably gonna have nightmares all night. All right, it is now day six of Summerween. And today I actually think I'm gonna go try and see if any stores have Halloween decorations yet. I was seeing some people on my Patreon Discord talk about some of the stores already having Halloween stuff out and posting hauls. So I wanna go check and see. Although I feel like I remember last year, a lot of the stores around me didn't put stuff out until very late, so I don't know how much luck we're gonna have, but I figured I would go and check. I'm also going to stop at Barnes & Noble because there's a lot of books that came out today that I would like to get. So while I'm out shopping, I'm going to listen to an audiobook, and I'm still reading And the Trees Crept In, but I feel like that's not an audiobook to listen to while I'm doing other things. It's not really a multitasking kind of audiobook, so I'm gonna pick something else. And actually, in my first Summerween vlog, I had mentioned that I was saving my best friend's exorcism for Halloween, but I got a couple comments from people saying that it is better to read it in the summer and it's more of like a summery kind of book. My library actually had the audiobook available for this, so I think I'm gonna listen to that while I am shopping. Which, by the way, if you do not listen to an audiobook while you're shopping, I don't know what you're doing because it is the best experience ever. And also it deters people from talking to you. So we're gonna do that, I'm very excited. Hopefully I can get a lot of listening done while I'm out and come back with some good stuff. Today, 
was such a long day i got back from running all of my errands it was very hot out i also tripped and fell and twisted my ankle so that was um fun i got a lot of stuff though so the first place i went to was michael's looking for halloween decor and they really didn't have much put out yet they had one aisle like half of the aisle had Halloween decor, but it was kind of like not like their home decor collections that they normally have. It was like Halloween party stuff, but they did have this beautiful hanging canvas that was kind of like botanical vintage looking. I love it. It is totally my vibe. So I bought that. It was also on sale. I don't know yet where I'm going to hang it, but it's pretty big. I'm sure I'll find a spot for it somewhere, but I just... I had to get it. It was beautiful. Then I went to Home Goods, also looking for Halloween stuff, which they had more than Michael's, but it still seemed like it kind of looked like overstock for maybe last year. I don't know if they do that. I did find these two champagne glasses with these skeleton hands. I love them. And this is the type of stuff that I would leave out all year. I have a wine shelf. Probably just put these with all my other like wine and champagne glasses. And lastly, I went to Barnes and Noble because today is book release day. So there were a lot of new releases that I wanted to get. They also were still having their buy one, get one half off all of their hardcovers in the store. I got three books. I was going to get Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey because that is the book that my patrons picked for our August book club. But I remembered when I was in there that I had pre-ordered it, so it's probably gonna be delivered today. So then I got Just Like Mother. This is a horror cult book. That's all I know about it. It sounds really cool. Also, this cover is just super creepy. Oh my God, why does it look like me? Does anyone else see that or is that just me? I don't <laughs> Twins. Yeah, I've heard that it's very wild and crazy, so. I've been really anticipating that. I also got So Happy For You by Celia Lasky, which I had not heard of at all. And then randomly, I just saw it popping up in booktubers videos. A wedding weekend spirals out of control in this bold, electrifying, hilarious novel about the complexities of female friendship. I don't know, but this looks like it could be a good summary read. And then the last one that I got that also came out today is Mary, An Awakening of Terror by Nat Cassidy. First of all, was not expecting this to be as expensive as it was. It's a paperback that was $22 publishing what are you doing but i'm obsessed with this cover and this says that it is it blends midsummer and american psycho what about this woman named mary who is uh this middle-aged woman who things have been changing inside her along with hot flashes and body aches she can't look in the mirror without passing out and the voices in her head have been urging her to do unspeakable things mary discovers that these experiences are echoes of an infamous serial killer i don't know it sounds crazy but like, I'm excited for that. So that was my little shopping outing. Now I'm gonna go take like a long ass nap because I am so tired and I'm gonna put ice on my ankle because it hurts. This is why I don't go out, okay? I just get tired and I injure myself. All right, it is the last day of Summerween. Today, I actually came to my parents' house because it is my grandma's 90th birthday and we're having a party so i don't know how much reading i'm gonna get done today but i do want to try to finish up my best friend's exorcism and then that'll probably be it last night i did finish and the trees crept in and i think i'm gonna end up giving it three stars it was definitely an interesting read and like i said the audiobook experience was 10 out of 10 amazing i highly recommend listening to the audiobook it was a really great like whole production and it definitely added to like this very creepy eerie atmosphere of the book and I did overall enjoy it it was a great reading experience but I think somewhere along the way it kind of lost me and became a little bit convoluted and I don't necessarily know if like the ending was like worth it but it wasn't a bad read I did enjoy it and I think I would try another book by this author I do own two of her other books so I would definitely try those especially if the audiobook narration is similar in those but yeah I mean it was three stars 
it was fine. I'm halfway into My Best Friend's Exorcism, which I am loving. I listened to a lot of it when I was shopping and maybe it wasn't like the best book to be listening to when I was in public because there were some parts where I was like getting freaked out. But I guess I haven't even explained what this book is about. So basically this is about these two teenage girls in the 80s who are best friends and then one of the girls is starts to act very, very strangely and her best friend comes to realize that she's possessed by a demon and is doing everything that she can to help her friend whilst everyone else around her is making that impossibly difficult. Something that so far I'm loving about this book is the female friendship aspect of it and just how like how accurate it is in portraying like the the complexity and the intimacy of teenage girl friendships. I feel like a lot of times in media they want to portray teenage girls as having very like competitive and strained and petty friendships when like in reality teenage girl friendships are like the most loyal bond that you will have. Like your best friend as a teenager is probably the most ride or die anyone will be for you in your entire life. And I really like how this book is portraying that and how the main character is like so determined to save her best friend even though everything is working against her and making it so hard and so difficult and nobody believes her and oh, it's just so good. I really love it. So I'm gonna keep listening to that today on and off and hopefully I'll be able to finish it before the readathon is over. I did get some packages that I've already opened. So I got... The Seven Visitations of Sydney Burgess, which I got this to read for a reading vlog that I'm very excited about. This sounds really weird and interesting. It's a horror about possession, so we'll see. That sounds cool. Then I got some books that were sent to me from authors and publishers. I got Nobody's Princess by Erica Ridley, which I'm very excited to read. This is a historical romance. Up All Night with a Good Duke by Amy Rose Bennett, another historical ledge by Stacey McEwen, which is a fantasy romance. This one comes out, I think, in September. The Lawyer by Marnie Mann, which is a romance. And then also, Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey, which is my Patreon book next month. Very excited to read that. So that's my little book haul for today. I also watched a horror movie last night called No One Gets Out Alive. It's on Netflix and I really liked it. It's about this woman who moves into this boarding house and weird creepy stuff is going on there. She's seeing ghosts maybe. It's maybe haunted. There's maybe a demon. It was really like not what I was expecting, like the ending of it. Once you finally find out what's going on, but I really enjoyed it. So that was the horror movie that I watched last night. So I just finished My Best Friend's Exorcism and five stars. That is my favorite thing that I've read this week. The last chapter made me cry, like full sobbing, crying. It was such a good ending and like, oh, it like really made me feel very strongly. This is my fourth Grady Hendrix book and it's by far my favorite. I've never given one of his books five stars before and this is my favorite. This was the best. I definitely think this is gonna be one of my favorite books of the year. I feel like this was a really great horror book but also just like an amazing book about friendship. Like that really was my favorite part of it was the friendship. I mean you guys know if you watch my channel I'm a big romance reader. I love romantic relationships but I also love a really great friendship. For me I feel like those are the ones that hit harder and like make me feel more emotional and that's like what this book was about. I mean like yeah this book technically is about a demonic possession and an exorcism but it's really like at the core the heart of the story is this friendship between these two girls who refuse to give up on each other and they're like willing to die for each other. I mean, I, I've already said this, but the way that the main character was like so determined to save her friend and was like, I am not going to let this demon take my friend from me. And the things that she was willing to do, like the lengths that she was willing to go to to save her best friend, just touched me so much. Yeah, I mean, I had a very strong reaction to the ending. So yeah, five stars. I loved this. So I think I'm not gonna read anything else today. We are starting my grandma's party soon. This was such a great reading week for me. I read seven books in seven days 
which I very rarely do. And I pretty much enjoyed every single book that I read. I don't think I gave anything less than three stars. I love ranking things. So let's rank all the books that I read. At the bottom, And the Trees Crept In, this is the only book that I gave three stars, which again, it was not a bad book. It was just fine, but definitely my least favorite out of the seven. I think at six, I'm gonna put Comfort Me with Apples, which I really, really loved. I just think due to the length of this book, how short it was, how quick of a story it was, the other books I felt stronger for. Then at number five is probably going to be What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. Also really, really loved this. Not my favorite T. King Fisher, but it was a really enjoyable, creepy, atmospheric read. Then at number four is going to be Notes on an Execution, which I really enjoyed. This was like a literary psychological drama, very interesting read. At number three, Near the Bone, which I loved. This was a very fun creature horror that I could totally see as a movie. At number two, This Thing Between Us, which I gave five stars and I loved. Very bizarre cosmic horror. And then number one, My Best Friend's Exorcism, which is definitely gonna be a favorite for the year. I had so much fun with this. Yeah, I mean, everything that I read this week was really great. I think I had a very great reading week and I really enjoyed vlogging this week. I'm gonna link some other booktubers who did some Summerween vlogs in the description. So if you wanna check out some more Summerween vlogs, you can find those linked below. Hello. Yeah, thank you guys for watching all these and following me through the week. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!